Hi guys, this is Nia and today I'll be sharing with you some tips and tricks to paint thin lines for things like stems or fine details in your painting. Someone asked me about this a while ago and I thought it was a bit hard to explain in words since there are a few factors that might play a part depending on your own techniques. So first I'm just going to show you a few points of the important things that I always take into account when painting thin lines or stems then I'm going to apply it to a painting of a baby's breath as practice as these flowers are probably around 80% stem so I thought that it would be a good practice. So the first point that I want to make, though it may seem obvious, is the brush size. The brush size plays a huge part in this, especially if you are new and you might not have developed the fine muscles to produce delicate lines. So here I have four sizes and basically Rather than using those large ones, you can switch to the smaller brush when adding fine details or painting stems. Though it is possible to paint thin lines with large brushes, you are prone to making mistakes because there are more chance of you accidentally putting too much pressure. So here I'm just going to use my spare paint that I have on my palette, but just use whatever you have on hand. I'm just going to demonstrate a few lines with different sized brushes so you can see the difference between the sizes even if it's only a little. So as you can see here with a large brush I can create quite delicate lines but because the barrel holds more bristles you are more likely to make a mistake if you accidentally lose control. I'm going to paint more lines with a slightly smaller brush this time. I'm just going to say that this is a medium size in comparison to what I just used but this is also an old brush that I used a lot so the tip doesn't hold such a sharp end anymore so I have to also be careful with keeping the right pressure with this one. Moving on to an even smaller brush, as you can see this brush is much more suitable to paint thin lines than the previous ones. It comes to a very fine tip and it's much smaller so it doesn't hold as much water and if I accidentally applied more pressure I won't make such a huge mistake. I'm also going to show you this again with an even smaller brush which is my size 0 brush that I always use for the details in my paintings. As you can see, the tip is much smaller and I can create even finer lines. And I know you probably won't be able to see this through the video, but it's also much easier for me to paint with this. So I can go at a much faster rate without worrying if I would accidentally apply too much pressure. So all these brushes here are from different brands. The first one is a size 8 by Lyra. Next one is a size 2 by VTech and then size 2 by Reeves and the last one is my Scepter Gold 2 by Windsor Newton and I've mentioned this a few times in my older videos but as you can see here different brands go by different sizes so the only way of knowing what size is best for a specific painting is mostly by feel and knowing the size that you're going to paint and what size would suit it more. If you're interested in more brush control exercises as well as getting to know your brush sizes. I do have a Skillshare class which I went over this in more detail along with worksheets and exercises that you can do to help you develop that feel. So if you're interested, as usual, I have all the links and details in the description box. The next point that I want to go over is pressure. We've discussed this slightly in the previous point, but let me just demonstrate again with a large brush. This is as thin as I can make it and if I apply even the slightest bit more pressure you can start to see the difference in the weight of the line already. So now switching to my smaller brush I can create the thin lines easily but if I apply more pressure either the brush will run out of paint easily because it holds less or the line would not be as thick still because there are much less bristles than the large brush. So here I'm going to demonstrate again painting with medium pressure and then using less and less. You can see that even if I put a certain amount of pressure, the line is still not as thick as the line that I painted with a larger brush. Moving on to the next point, which is water control. As I mentioned because before, since the smaller brush holds less water, it's easier to control the flow because too much water will just make the paint travel too fast 
and make it a bit uncontrollable. So here I'm going to show you what the line will look like using my small brush with a heavy load of paint which you can tell because the tip of my brush is soaked and therefore won't create a sharp tip anymore. This is around the same amount of pressure if not lighter than the previous line I made but as you can see it's much thicker with more uneven distribution because I find it much harder to control the flow. This is why I like to dab excess water off on tissue and as you can see now the bristles are mostly dry but the dampness of the paint is just enough to be able to hold the bristles together to a fine tip. This will probably be easier with softer bristles as the hair would gather easily. This here is a synthetic brush though and even though the hairs are a bit thicker and stronger they can still come together in a slightly damp or dry brush state and I'm going to repeat this using my larger synthetic brush where the bristles are already a little bit old and therefore the tip is not as sharp but the bristles on this brush is also slightly more thick however it's still possible to bring them together in this dry brush state to create really fine lines. Which then brings us to the next point, which is to find the tip of your brush. Some people may find this a bit tedious, but it is something that I always look out for, especially combined with the previous tip, which is to control your water. Sometimes the brushes can create a flat surface such as this, so you can see that there's a thick and a thin point. So instead of using the thick side, you want to find the thin point, which can give you very, very fine lines. I'm going to show you this again but with an older brush that I have which is slightly deformed as the tip slightly bends. When I use this brush and I don't pay close attention sometimes I'll put in contact the back end of the brush which is fairly thick and I would not be able to create thin lines. So the key is to find the tip by just rotating your brush and finding that sharpest point and that is the contact point which you should use to paint those delicate lines. As a final tip, if you see from all of the lines that I've painted here, I'm actually using my pinky to help stabilize my hands. So whenever you can, try to get used to holding your brush with your pinky out and let it touch the paper and hold that distance to give the rest of your hands better stabilization. Moving on to the painting demonstration where I'm going to be painting baby breaths flowers. You can try to keep all of those points in mind when painting this and even if you're new and it's still a bit difficult for you to control the brush, at least now you know what to look for. Anyway, I'm going to first talk about the form of the flowers so we can translate it into painting. As you can see, the stems of these flowers always go by three divisions, if not two because the stems are so thin and delicate and some may snap off accidentally. So here I drew out the main stem first, which will be thicker than the rest, and each time I want to introduce three branches, I create a clear separation as well as playing slightly with the direction of the branches. You can also draw curved lines, which I think will make it look delicate and gives a nice movement and basically we're just going to repeat this until we have many fine branches divided into threes and as we get to the flowers the branches are also getting thinner and finer which we can translate later into painting and I'm also going to create little tiny markings with thin curved lines wherever the branching starts to happen and this will help to bring that natural look where you can see the growth instead of the stems looking smooth and wavy. As for the flowers, I'm only going to simply paint them as dots or circles ranging in different sizes and placing them on top of those stems if not around them for natural distribution. Next I will quickly go over the colors. They're very simple, I'm just going to use a mix between sepia, yellow ochre, and viridian. I'm just going to mix these three colors to create a very muted yellow-green color so it looks like the flowers are partially dried. If you want to paint fresher looking ones, you might want to add less sepia to give a more vibrant green. Then for the flowers, I also added a touch of permanent yellow deep to give a slightly less muted yellow. 
So here's the color that I'm going to use and I'm going to paint the stamps like how I drew them out before. So essentially here we're just going to paint lines breaking in two different directions. I'm first using the size 2 brush by Artemedia because I don't mind this part to be a bit thicker because these are going to be the main stems or branches and as I start breaking or dividing them into thinner branches, I try to put less and less pressure to create finer lines. Whenever you start to feel like you're having less and less control to create those thin lines, you can switch to a smaller brush. In fact, if it's more comfortable for you, you can also paint the whole thing using a small brush, but you might want to go over certain parts, especially for the larger stems, a few times to create thicker lines. Another tip that I'd also like to mention for drawing fine stems is the fact that if you draw a larger composition or painting, the ratio of thick lines will look thinner in comparison to if you were to paint the same thickness in a small composition for smaller flowers. And I think that this is a very easy way for you to avoid making a mistake, especially if you're new since it's much more forgivable if you accidentally create thick lines. Here I've already switched to my smallest brush as I'm getting to the fine stems near the tips and I'm also going to go over certain areas with a thicker consistency paint to intensify some of the colors of the previous stem to darken them as they've dried to a more dull color and I'm just going to repeat this step until I have fine branches all throughout the stems and don't worry if they're looking a bit stiff for now because we're going to add even finer lines as finishing touches at the end. After you've painted most of the fine branches, I'm going to add those little curved lines at every division. I'm only going to use a couple or a few lines so those joints won't look too bulky. I'm also going to clean up some of the joints if the lines are a bit messy. Next I'm going to create the color mixture for the flowers. Here I introduced a new color which is permanent yellow deep to lighten the color and I'm going to mix this into the previous green so it still has a similar tone. And I'm going to use a very very thin consistency of this because the flowers are mostly white so I want this to serve as a slight tint to the paper. I would also suggest for you to swatch the mixture on a scrap piece of paper to make sure that the paint is light enough. To paint the flowers, I'm going to use small dots while varying the size. You don't have to paint the flowers exactly on top of each stem. In fact, I like to randomize it slightly to give it a looser effect and I think this works well with the structure of the stems to loosen up the painting and give it a little bit of movement. You can paint a few bunches at once so you can wait for the paint to slightly settle on paper before and once the paint has settled on paper while it's still wet but not puddling with a slight sheen on the paper, I'm going to switch to my small brush and take some of the green from the stem before and dot some of the green at the bottom of some of the flowers only giving it a slight variation and gradation. Watercolors always look darker while it's wet, so after the paint is completely dry, you can see that the colors are very faded. So I like to add another layer, applying this to small random areas to give it a bit more depth from the slight difference in value. Painting in a very thin consistency is quite tricky because you have so much more water than paint in your brush. So if you're having difficulty with this, you can also add white to the yellow mix, making the paint a bit thicker than just using plain water. And this way you have a better consistency to work with. However, if at any point you've made the mistake of placing too much green or the flowers looking a bit too dark, then you can take off the excess paint while it's still wet using a clean dry brush or tissue to absorb the excess water and pigment. So here I'm going to continue on with the other areas using the same method as before to fill in the small branches. Take notice that I like to add a lot of small dots as well because baby breath flowers come in a lot of different sizes 
and it's okay to paint some which look like they're slightly floating. In fact, to finish everything off, I like to actually use my small brush in a very dry consistency to add very, very fine lines randomly to connect some of those floating flowers. I'm not too worried about painting them in groups of threes anymore because I want this to be so thin and subtle and I like the fact that there's a clear variation between the weight of the stem from the thick main stem to the barely even visible ones so it looks very light and airy. And that's basically it. That's the final step to the painting. I hope that this video is clear and understandable enough for those of you who are new to watercolors. It does take a while to get used to the points that I mentioned before at the first half of the tutorial, but it'll come with practice and experience. So anyway, if you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end. Like usual, the brushes, paint, and paper that I use for the painting will be listed in the description box along with my social media links. I haven't mentioned this before, but I would like to also thank the very kind people who has taken their time to support me through my coffee page. I am always grateful for your encouraging love and support of this channel as well as my Skillshare. So thank you very much and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!